Hello and welcome to another interesting video on the Reedveld refinement through the general structure analysis system that is the GSUS software. So in my previous video I have already shown how to install the GSUS software and the converter software which you need to install in order to convert your X-ray diffraction file into the software format. So today we are going to see how to perform a Ridwell refinement analysis through Jesus software. So in the first step, let us go to the convex software. Here it is in my desktop. So I'll just click on this convex software. So X-ray diffraction uh, data generally comes in different formats, like uh, depending upon the instrument, whether it is from Philips instrument or Rigaku or Brooker. So it comes with uh, different, you know, formats dot uh, RAW dot RT. Okay. Sometimes you just uh, get the uh, uh, X-ray diffraction data in different Excel uh, sheets also. So I'll just uh, let you know how to convert your X-ray diffraction data uh, so that we can convert the data into a Mm, uh, valid software file okay so i have to compatible software file so i have to open this uh, x-ray uh, diffraction data which is uh, i have this x-ray diffraction data in excel format okay so what you need to do you need to select uh, both this column and uh, you can just uh, control c or you can just copy uh, all this data in two columns and you open a notepad file in your uh, desktop and after opening this notepad file you just control V or paste uh, all this data into the notepad file and here you go to this file then save as you just click here you give some file name suppose let me give my file name this is bt1 uh, and in this dot txt you just uh, write dot asc you can uh, use small letter bt1 dot asc and you just paste it in uh, some folder i always recommend that uh, before performing any read belt refinement so a lot of temporary files are created uh, during the process of this uh, running this software. So you just make one folder in any one of your drives. You just name it as Jesus and you put all your files, all your X-ray uh, diffraction converted files and all these temporary files will be uh, you um, use in a such way, uh, you use in a such a way that uh, all these files will be saved in that uh, folder only okay later on you can delete the temporary files if uh, your system gets slow down so just uh, save the uh, button uh, click on the save button bt1.asc and your file is saved actually uh, then then you can go to this convex uh, software uh, and uh, you just uh, click on E ASC double I two theta uh, format then select files so I have uh, my data in this uh, Jesus folder and here the files of type you can go to all files you see there are a number of uh, you know dot rt dot dat dot raw format so you can convert directly from those format to you know the compatible software format or otherwise you can just uh, uh, follow the procedure if you are getting your data from the instrument from excel sheet so you can just uh, follow this procedure okay so i will just uh, select this bt1 converted file uh, which is converted into asc format so i'll click on this open button and you see my data is getting read by this software you know see 10.020 degree to 80 degree it is already showing 
and you just an in a, in the anode you just uh, click uh, whatever your uh, um, target is uh, i mean uh, copper or molybdenum the source of the x ray uh, you must be having some knowledge about the instrument uh, in which you are actually taking the data x ray diffraction data so you just click on those things then alpha 2 strip there is a option so you just click on this alpha 2 strip option and here you see the file out output details in the file output details you just go to uh, gsas gsas so my input file is uh, was in the format of ascii and the output file should be in the format of gsas and this extension in this extension you have to go to uh, you have to just uh, backspace it and uh, you type dot gsa okay and you see you can change the directory and i will not uh, change my directory because i want to save all these files in one folder but if, if you if you haven't performed uh, your read well refinement uh, and you are doing it for the first time you just create a folder and you place all these uh, i mean files in that folder uh, i am not going to change this folder okay so here there is an option do that convert okay so you can just click on this conversion process and your uh, x-ray diffraction um, pattern or the data is converted to the compatible software format okay so now to perform the x-ray diffraction pattern i'll go to this uh, expguy icon i'll click on this icon and uh, i will uh, go to my concerned jesus folder and uh, uh, in this concerned jesus folder you see there is already a file created that is called as bt1.exp okay so uh, here you can uh, already i was uh, uh, i had created the uh, folder uh, the experimental file but you can just uh, again uh, click on this bt uh, you know 2 you can just write bt2 then you go to red button and this bt2.exp does not exist in this jesus folder click ok to create so you have to create a experimental file so experiment which you are going to perform now i mean the experiment is the read well refinement itself so just create it and you go to uh, this uh, again one icon is coming input title for the experiment so you can just write down here bt02 uh, try to uh, give shortcut names so that it is easy and the software will not hang so just uh, bt02 and continue so my experimental page is actually now seen right so uh, before performing the read well refinement data you must have prior knowledge about your uh, composition uh, your structure what are the wyckoff positions uh, what are the lattice parameter of this uh, structure expected lattice parameter of this structure what are the position coordinates uh, why we choose such kind of position coordinates what is the space group of this uh, you know uh, the studied material now, what is the structure of this material crystal structure what are the bravais lattices so you must have some preliminary idea about the jesus um, uh, software as well so why we are uh, performing uh, the read well refinement what is the purpose behind it and uh, what kind of mathematical uh, you know uh, expressions or functions uh, the software use uh, to you know refine your uh, uh, x-ray diffraction data so these things you have to read uh, from the jesus manual as well as some books and uh, the basics must be clear before uh, uh, doing such kind of uh, experiments okay so in uh, another so this video i will not uh, describe much about the basics i'll just show you how to run the software but the basics if you want you can comment on this uh, video comment section and i'll be definitely helping you and in a, in the further course of action if you face some problem while performing some read well refinement 
of complex structures like if you have a double perovskite if you have a uh, you know composite uh, you are mixing two kind of compositions and you are performing the uh, red well refinement if you are having some impurities kind of thing and uh, uh, you are not uh, unable to perform the experiment uh, in a better way so i will be definitely helping you out so just uh, coming to the uh, current uh, explanation so here there is a option called add phase so you can go to the add phase you can uh, uh, click on that phase title okay so i am performing uh, uh, the ritual refinement of a very well known uh, uh, studied crystal structure that is barium titanate okay so barium titanate is a ferroelectric material that possesses different kind of structures at different temperatures so you must be knowing about that so i'll just uh, uh, write the phase title the phase title is uh, tetragonal tetragonal and uh, what is the space group of the uh, composition so i have p uh, so uh, how to write the space group if you have a space group like p4 double m so you can write p space 4 space m space m if you have a space group called pm3 bar m so you can write like this p slash m slash minus 3 not slash actually p space m space minus 3 space m you can write like this so in the current uh, case uh, i have my space group is uh, p space 4 space m space m okay you uh, just uh, don't uh, merge all these letters you just give a space in between uh, then uh, you go to cell type so cell type you can click any or you can go to if you know your uh, structure is uh, tetragonal uh, the expected structure you can go to the tetragonal and abc abc is the lattice parameter of the structure so um, i'll just uh, have a because from the literature and from different you know uh, analysis or experiments uh, i know this uh, expected uh, lattice parameter would be around uh, 3.99 3.99 a equal to b not equal to c the c axis is quite elongated in the tetragonal structure so i can just uh, put uh, some expected value like 4.1 not okay so i can go to this you know uh, add uh button and this then click on this uh, you know continue button and uh, your uh, the some of the initial parameters of the uh, structure uh, has been uh, loaded in this software okay so now coming to the add new atoms button so you can click on this add new buttons uh, at, um, button so you can if you have a, a structure of five atoms six atoms seven atoms you can just click on adding those atoms so in the current case i can go to add atoms uh, like uh, more atom boxes i can click on this more atom boxes i have uh, b a t i o 3 so i have three kinds of uh, you know atoms but uh, depending upon the position coordinates uh, whether uh, you have uh, oxygen at uh, you know two types of position so you can uh, o1 and o2 you can add so more atom boxes i will just add uh, two more uh, okay and you see uh, import atoms from uh, there is a option okay import atoms from and there is another option here like cif crystallographic information file if you have if you if anybody is having this crystallographic information file they can select this option and just go to the respective import atoms from that uh, cif file and click on and just import the cif file to this software but if you don't have your cif file you can just create a kind of cif file like uh, i can go to uh like uh, atom type uh, here uh, i'll put the name of the atom barium okay and the xyz coordinates of the respective uh, atom so uh, as i said you must learn the basics uh, how to put the atomic uh, position coordinates okay 
so uh, like uh, barium generally uh, uh, takes the corner position of a tetragonal structure so i can put 0 0 0 or i can put 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 it depends actually so there are two types of uh, you know crystallographic representation one is your octahedral representation one is your you know uh, dodecahedral representation there are different kinds uh, okay so you assume that uh, uh, this uh, 0 0.5 i'll put here and then 0 0.5 and the third one in the z axis i will just uh, put some uh, uh, you know larger value 0 0.58 because uh, you know barium titanate is uh, not a centrosymmetric structure it is non centrosymmetric okay you cannot expect that uh, the line of symmetry passes through the center uh, you cannot expect in this type of structure so i'll just uh, put some elongation factor into this uh, you know so then uh, i'll go to this uh, titanium atom so ti then uh, i'll uh, go to the xyz coordinates of the titanium atom and i'll put here 0 uh, 0 and in the third one i'll just uh, have a a different value closer to this zero but it's not exactly equal to zero and i'll be putting some you know expected or average uh, values so i can put uh, zero zero point one zero okay so different you know uh, it depends uh, different people take uh, like barium is zero 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 point one zero and in the titanium case they just replace uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 oh, the, you can also play with those kind of you know permutation and combinations so in the oxygen case again so since it is a tetragonal structure so you cannot expect uh, that uh, all the you know all these uh, all these axes the position coordinates of um, you know uh, two types of there will be two types of oxygen actually in the barium titanate condition so here i'll put one oxygen uh, like 0 uh, uh, the xyz positions is 0 0 and it is 0 0.54 i'll put like this and in the other one uh, other oxygen i'll put here like uh, 0 mm, 0 and 0 0.5 okay so one face if you uh, take so 0 sorry 0 0 0.5 and uh, let us put this one 0 0.5 and this one again this is uh, in spite of putting is uh, 0 0.5 i'll i'll put here um, 0 0.06 like this i'll put okay so here you see uh, in the uh, in one oxygen atom i am putting 0 0 was 0 0.54 and in the other oxygen atom i am putting what 0 0 0.5 and 0 0.06 like kind of thing okay so the, now click on the add atoms button and my you know so the occupancy the ui so what is ui so this is the isotherm isotropic uh, you know uh, thermal parameter okay so there are different kinds of uh, terms uh, you will come across while uh, uh, running this software so you must be acquainted which term is what and what is the significance of that term what is called as fractional coordinates what is called as multi occupancy multi occupancy stands for like uh, suppose uh, you have a condition like this so barium you are taking 0.8 percent and titanium is 0.2 percent so in this occupancy you can in spite of writing one you can write 0 0.8 and in the titanium condition you can put 0 0.2 that uh, you know the dope the ritual refinement for the doping or the doped materials i will be discussing in my next uh, you know videos so for the timing let us consider this uh, pure barium titanate structure so then i'll go to, uh, to this powder so in this uh, while after going to this powder i'll just uh, click on this add new histogram so add new histogram 
here there is an option called select file so you just select the file and you come here to bt1.gsa the file which you have converted i mean the experimental file or the file which you got from the x-ray diffraction instrument xrd instrument and that data you have converted your experimental data this is your experimental data converted into the compatible gsus format so i have once i selected bt1.gsa you see this usable data limit is coming 80 degree because you have taken your data up to 80 degree right so it is coming 80 degree then select the instrument parameter file so you click on this select instrument parameter file you can go uh, to this uh, your uh, c drive where your software jesus software is installed you can click on this uh, jesus you just go to the example and in this example you can go here there is a, a file called inst underscore x r y dot p r m okay there are different uh, files but generally for the you know ceramic compositions or you can uh, say that uh, crystal structures like uh, uh, cubic uh, monoclinic tetragonal rhomboidal so this kind of structure we just use this example file or you know instrumental parameter file so that is by default in the software you have to put this you know go to this uh, file so you just open it or you can just select it so you you see the data file has been uh, selected as well as the instrument parameter file has been selected and you can go to this add button and you see uh, the experimental file has been loaded to the software now here you see there are two wavelengths showing 1.540500 and 1.544300 this is your alpha 1 k alpha 1 copper k alpha 1 and this is your copper k alpha 2 okay so you can just delete one uh, you know k alpha 2 you can delete because if you uh, go on refining with the k alpha 2 uh, you must be knowing why this copper k alpha 1 and k alpha 2 are coming uh, while you perform the xrd okay so you just try to avoid this k alpha 2 while performing your experiment or while performing your read well refinement okay we can strip the uh, k alpha 2 here so then go to this edit background uh, you know option and this function type is 2 and number of terms is 3 so this function why we are choosing why i am choosing this reciprocal interpolation function so you have to go through the jesus manual why this mathematical function is necessary or why i am choosing uh, reciprocal interpretation interpolation function for which kind of structures or for which kind of crystal structure i can choose power series or for which kind of uh, you know uh, crystal structure i can see uh, choose linear interpolation function that we have to you have to study so i am not going into the details of that then going to the continue button okay then going to the uh, continue button and uh, the uh, function has been selected then there is an option you see add new histogram here add new histogram it's already done actually this uh, this has been done already so no need to perform again so now coming to this scaling and this profile so everything is done so now let us uh, perform this uh, read belt refinement so before performing let us first uh, run this software so how to run this software so you have to click on this you see p o w p r e f option is there so you just click on this uh, option okay so there is a uh, uh, window coming and it is showing command window and it is showing press any key to continue you can click on the space bar okay so i have just clicked on the 
स्पेस बार ओके एंड यू सी फाइल बी टी टू सम कमांड इज शोइंग एंड यू जस्ट लोड न्यू यू की क्लिक ऑन द लोड न्यू बटन सो आफ्टर रनिंग दिस पाव प्रेफ यू जस्ट क्लिक ऑन दिस जेन जेनलेस जी ई एन एल ई एस यू क्लिक ऑन दिस जेनलेस एंड हियर यू सी वट इज द काय स्क्वेर इट इज शोइंग थर्टीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव इट इज टू मच सो काय स्क्वेर थर्टीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव इज टू मच एंड यू क्लिक ऑन दिस कंटिन्यू बटन सो टू क्लिक ऑन दिस कंटिन्यू बटन यू गो टू एनी यू क्लिक ऑन एनी यू नो की so that will be continued so now so what are the things we need to refine first of all we have to go to this refine cell okay first of all we have to refine the lattice parameter which we have uh, entered here so by clicking on this refine cell now let us go to this power prep again and again you go to then load new you can click on the load new and go to genless okay and again it is showing 1375 and you see your lattice parameters are changing so again you click on this uh, you just uh, um, omit that uh, tick mark again you go to power play and go to genless and your 1375 is converted to 1374 so now you have to go to this scaling or the profile so in this profile button what you have to do you have to go to this g u g v g w these are the background coefficients okay so you click on this g u first of all then again click on power pref again put a, a any key click on any key and you see your chi square is gradually decreasing 1348 it is it has come okay so again you just uh, uh, close that uh, uh, you know function again go to power pref and you click on this button load new and again genless you see gradually your uh, chi square reduced chi square is 1317 now and you click on this any uh, key okay so to view your data to view your data first of all so how to view your data you can go to this live plot option and i have clicked on this live plot option you see so you in this live plot option this cross cross symbol you see cross symbol is the observed observed pattern and your uh, red color line red color line is your calculated pattern the chi square is now very much high 1317 so that is why your calculated pattern has not reached to the optimum limit yet either there may be a problem in your you know uh, data or anything kind of thing so so chi square has to be reduced it has to come uh, closer to 1 then only you can expect that uh, your uh, uh, redweld refinement is performed in a better way okay so here again we will go to this live plot and you see your data has been taken from 10 degree to 80 degree but your peaks actually started from after 20 degree okay your peaks have already started from 20 degree and from 10 degree to 20 degree there is a lot of you know noise unnecessary noise in your data so what you have to do you have to go to the file 
you have to go to the file you see there is an option called set data limits and excluded regions you go to this option then zoom it here you see there is a option called uh, 0 degree to 80 degree here it is showing you just write down here 20 to 80 degree okay so that data the software is not going to do hard labor to refine that you know background or that uh, coefficient okay so definitely your chi square must improve after this so now again click on this refined cell click on this power pref button and again hit any key load new and again go to the generalist you see the reduced chi square now is 1305 so again click on any key and load new so you key, just keep on refining you just keep on refining like this now you see your reduced chi square has drastically reduced to 1009 you have to click keep on refining the cell parameters first of all okay so again click on this refine cell go to power pref then go to generalist the reduced chi square now is 204.4 so it has drastically reduced that means from this we came to a conclusion that the unnecessary portions has to be deleted somebody suppose they have taken the data up to 90 degree or 100 degree so those unnecessary portions where your actually structure uh, don't uh, show any peaks xrd peaks so that has to be deleted first of all otherwise the software will take uh, extra you know amount of uh, you know <laughs> pressure to refine those portions but depending upon your functions and the initial parameters which you have given given so definitely it is not going to you know uh, the goodness of fit will definitely not match okay so again just uh, switch off this uh, uh, refinement uh, button uh, refine cell button and go to the power pref and you can click on this and go to generalist you see now it's again half of the 204 the chi square is reduced to 1 not 2 go to continue button and load new okay so with this you just keep on refining the cell parameters i can just again go to this power pref generalist so now you see after clicking on this refine cell three to four times you see chi square is not reducing drastically from 100 to it has now just reduced uh, 0.5 okay so after when the chi square stops decreasing you uh, you should go to the some other you know functions to refine so now almost i can say that my lattice parameters so which i have uh, you know given or expected that has been refined by the software to some extent i can say that may change over a course of time so now coming to this background coefficients okay what are the background coefficients why it needs to be refined why we should refine the background coefficients why it comes uh, in a xrd pattern so these you have to study okay so now coming to this gu g as i said gu gv and gw they are all background coefficients so now again i will go to this gu power pref generalist then switch off So chi square is decreasing but it is not decreasing in a very drastic manner okay so you can just uh, hit on 
or click on this uh, uh, GU, GV and GW sequentially you have to go. So first you go to GU, then after uh, you know uh, refining this GU button or the background uh, GU, then go to GW. Okay, if needed, in the last uh, thing you come to GV. Okay, in the last option you come to GV. Then you see there are different other options like LX, LY, Shift. There are different other options. You can just try on those options. Okay. So now coming to before trying all those options, first after you know uh, going through the these background coefficients, you come to this phase. Okay. And coming to this phase, you can click on this X, U and F. What is F stands for? This is the fractional occupancy. Here the occupancy what we have taken is 1. But while our material is prepared, there must be different kinds of cationic vacancy, anionic vacancy, oxygen vacancy, okay, must be occurring inside the material. So while I am performing uh, or I am, uh, you know, synthesizing a sample, there are different kinds of vacancy or defects which occur in a material so the occupancy need not be 1 it may be 0 0.99 it may be 0 0.98 okay so depending upon the um, occupancy you can click on this f factor for every element you select this element suppose i am coming to this titanium part i'll just first uh, i'll click on this f button okay and i'll go to again power pref then go to zenless you see the chi square is reducing and you have got a new value or the new uh, fraction is 0 1.026 okay so you can again uh, switch off this uh, function and you can uh, perform such kind of things for every element so similarly what is this x stands for x stands for again this uh, you know fractional coordinates so this x y z coordinates which we have put here like 0 0 and 0 0.10 for uh, titanium that may also vary that may be 0 0.06 okay so i can click on this x button and go to this power pref again Sp space bar again generalless chi square is reducing but not in a drastic manner so i can again switch off this function i can go to barium again this x button power proof generalist okay so i'll keep on i'll keep on doing this till my chi square is reduced closer to the value of unity or one okay as much as we can take our chi square towards one so as i can say that my goodness of fit has been achieved and the expected structure or the expected pattern which i am i have taken that is actually uh, merging with my experimental pattern okay so i can go to that also so i can uh, do uh, other for uh, for the other elements also i can do such kind of uh, you know uh, i can uh, have some other uh, you know functions for uh, oxygen 3 and oxygen 4 i mean oxygen 1 and oxygen 2 i can also refine this x u and f parameters as well okay so then i will be showing you this u i s o u i s o Okay, so this UISO option also you can click. Suppose anisotropic coefficient. Anisotropic coefficient is known as UISO. Okay, so you can click on this UISO. Then click on this power pref again and again space brass, generalist, and you see chi square is reducing. Gradually it will reduce. It needs a lot of patience while performing this red well refinement. It is not a matter of, uh, you know, uh, it's not a very easy thing to refine and bring the chi square to generally one. 
sometimes what happens people what they do some students they uh, like uh, while performing this uh, read well refinement they just click on all the functions if you do such kind of things adventure so your chi square it is likely chance it may enhance up to 100 or uh, sometimes 1000 uh, or it will enhance or it will it will not reduce rather it will enhance and the goodness of which fit which you have achieved that will that may uh, be again disturbed so now let us come to the live plot and you see the live plot has been improved very smoothly okay there are a lot of uh, you know uh, the more uh, need to be achieved like this peak needs to be achieved okay or this peak needs to be uh, upgraded right but you see your main peak is almost you know uh, refined even if the chi square is nearly equal to you know 100 or something like that you see your main peak is almost you know uh, refined right but you know this higher angle side in this higher angle side the goodness of fit needs to be achieved so we'll be keep on doing such kind of you know exercises or uh, such kind of sequential step we have to follow in order to bring our chi square to uh, lesser values or equal to one or greater than one two or three that may be also also acceptable condition for the tetragonal structure okay so first step is to uh, refine the lattice parameter the second step is to refine the background coefficients the third step is to refine the you know xyz parameters or the fractional coordinates then the step is to um, refine the mm -hmm. occupancy and then the step is to refine the anisotropic coefficient uiso then there are some other parameters also that is lx ly lz these parameters also you can just uh, have a um, permutation combination on that this asymmetric coefficient again a s s y m this is asymmetric coefficient SHFT, this is the shifting of the peaks from its, you know, original uh, structure, okay. So, those kind of things you have to follow to perform read well refinement. Now, coming to, suppose you have achieved uh, a goodness of fit and you want to see what is your bond length, what is your bond angle, what is your theoretical density of the uh, material. So, you can click on this LST view. You see, I have clicked on this LST view and it is showing all this data, all this data of uh, my read well refinement. You see, the chi square here is 98.66. Okay, the value of the determinant it is showing and it will definitely show me the theoretical density of the data. You see, the calculated unit cell formula weight is this much. 234.471 you can uh, compare it with your uh, molecular weight of the composition then the density theoretical density is 6.061 gram per centimeter cube if you have the bulk density of the data if you have calculated the bulk density of the data you can go to the bulk density divided by theoretical density will give you the relative density of your sample or the apparent porosity you can measure from that uh, you know this this kind of data okay and all this you know bond angle uh, bond length other things also you will you will get from this list view uh, option and in this list view you will get uh, the ripple factor rp rwp those kind of things also you have to you have to study on it why i am why i should uh, uh, give this these data in my research paper or why i need to produce this kind of data so what is the significance of this rp rwp okay what is the fitted rp rwp what is the background rp rwp so you have to follow first read and then uh, show the data in your research papers okay 
so these things uh, i have already discussed uh, about the basic you know understanding or uh, the basic running of the jesus software you just try with your own structure you try with your own composition uh, on the comment section you can just uh, give some uh, comments if you are unable to perform the uh, software uh, you know or unable to run